There are plenty of seats available in the balcony if you would like to sit there. There's also some in the back alcove back here behind Olivia. Wave, Olivia. Hi. Thank you. All right. Good morning. It's good to have you here. And here comes our Kool-Aid man. <laughs> no, see, you, you missed the whole discussion a while ago. We're glad you're here. Uh, find a place and enjoy it. A few announcements that you would like to hear, if you would, would, would mind listening for just a few moments, please. Thank you. This portion of our 90th celebration will last till about 1045. We'll have about a 15 minute break or so if you want to go downstairs, get some coffee. Uh, there may be some, some morning desserts down there that you can imbibe with if you would like. Okay. John said no coffee. There should be some by the end of this time, though. And um, choir, you can go ahead and be seated. Yeah. We're glad you're here. We're grateful for the 90 years that Wells has been a part of the metro area and the many ministries that it's been a part of and continues to be a part of. You'll hear a lot about our history during this portion of our celebration this morning. You'll also get to hear some pretty good music, which, without further ado, I present to you Miss Jackie McGinnis. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you all who prayed for me. I thank you so much. I'm just going to sing one line, and that's all I can sing. The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence. Let all the earth keep silence before, before him. Keep silence, keep silence before, before. Good morning. morning. If you're here for this program, then you know that you're welcome because Wells Church is a place where everyone is welcome. For 90 years, 89 of the 90 years that Wells Church has existed, this room has had a very special feel to it. And the truth of what Jackie sang just a moment ago the Lord is in his holy temple, is very real. Many of us have felt that presence and have been drawn to it and are drawn here today. 
I first heard about Wells Church at a time in my life when I uh, didn't care anything about God, cared even less about churches. Um, somebody who was important to me, though, um, liked to come from time to time, come to Wells Church. She asked me to tag a log one time, and she said, they won't hassle you, and you can wear blue jeans. <laughs> So, so I came mainly to test that claim. <laughs> to my amazement, uh, she was right on both counts. Nobody hassled me, and I could wear my blue jeans. And a serendipity part of that was that the preaching that day wasn't half bad. <laughs> <clears throat> that was 38 years ago, and I'm still here. And so is the preacher who wasn't half bad that day. <laughs> and that preacher is now going to come and open us with a word of prayer. We are so very glad that you're here today. And we want you to be aware of the fact that this is our regular Sunday morning, Sunday school time. <laughs> Thank you for making it a very special day. You know, the scriptures are very interesting when they say there was a time that we were not a people, and then God made us a people. And some of you who are here today from the old Wells community, and they're not many, but some of the ones that brought the church into being helped to create that part. And the rest of you have continued to be to bring and to live out being the body of Christ in the world in which we live today. And so before I pray a little prayer, there's a song that we've all learned that we've come to appreciate so very much. And we're gonna do this as the introduction to our prayer. And after we have sung, thank you, Lord, just bow your head and we'll pray. Thank you, Lord. We thank you. Thank you, Lord. We just want to thank you, Lord. Let's pray. Okay, about the time we start praying, we are asking you to scooch if you can scooch. That's a new verse, isn't it? I'm going to scooch when the Spirit says scooch. I think we ought to go ahead and sing it. Let's do it. I'm going to scooch when the Spirit says scooch. I'm going to scooch when the Spirit says scooch. I'm going to scooch when the Spirit says scooch. And obey the working of the Lord. Okay, that's well, y'all. It's many voices and not one voice. It's uh, dialogue and not monologue. But for the time being, let's bow our heads and pray. Let's pray. God, we know that in a world like ours and in times like these, we need a little laughter and a lot of joy. But we don't for one moment overlook those who are in difficult circumstances and who find laughter and joy far removed from where they are just now. Thank you for being the God that's with us in good times and the God that's being with us and continues to be with us in bad times and for the God that calls us to brand new times. Bless this gathering. Thank you so very much for it. May every man, every woman, and every child go from this place today saying, it was good to be in the house of the Lord. In the name of Christ, our dear Lord, amen. Over the last 90 years, there have been a lot of characters in this place, a lot of saintly characters, and you're going to hear some of the names from Aunt Betty and Uncle Charlie here later on this morning. There have been other characters, too, and I am looking around and can't see him. Uh, uh, he, he was here, uh, and Raphael? Okay, that's the, the characters. 
One, one thing about Wells Church is that we're not locked into a rigid structure. And I'm happy now to present Raphael Sims. One, two. All right, there it is. Hey, everybody. This is my friend, Kimball Funches. Y'all seeing him play here and there. This is a song that I wrote for Keith uh, a good while back and uh, hadn't played it in a long time. Y'all probably, I'm sorry about me, y'all hearing us practice down there. But uh, anyway. I've writ rewritten it uh, two or three times because uh, everybody knows Keith and uh, as Keith, um, you know, he, he always is full of surprises. So I changed the song a little bit to stay current. But uh, it's called The Jazz Preacher, y'all. A child was born in New Orleans His mama called him Keith He played the drums like his daddy did Then he was called to preach He moved around and he went to school yeah. Then he married Miss Pat as well Sweet Pat the Lord said, Jackson is your home, boy. And your church home is Wells. Microphone's in the way, sorry. His voice swings like Count Basie, like an Ellington song. When he stands in the pulpit, talking about right and wrong. His voice will reach you, and his words will teach you. Everybody around here knows the jazz preacher, jazz preacher, come on Ken, I can't resist the whole Back there, Keith. All right, let's jam, Keith. Give the drummer some, y'all. Now, Wells has been here 90 years. And like Keith said, for so long. It's loving, caring, sharing that keeps this church so strong. You know the jazz preacher is preaching on and on. Oh, 
And all you people are what help it stay so long. Jazz preacher. Jazz preacher. A little history here. When the times were finally changing, some good men took a stand, and women too. Just like Ellington and Basie, Key was helping lead the band. And some folks wouldn't listen, and some were kind of withdrawn. Jazz preacher helped the healing like a favorite gospel song. Yeah, jazz preacher. Jazz preacher. Jazz preacher now. Nah. Jazz preacher. Now the church has been here for 90 years. Can I get an amen? And it's going to be here in 90 more. How about it? And right here in the sanctuary, in the midnight hour, 90 years from now, People will be saying, if you listen real close, you can hear him preaching on jazz preacher, jazz preacher, jazz preacher. Jazz preacher I want to thank that drummer whoever he was Campbell Funches, y'all. Thank you. God bless everybody. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. <clears throat> Long before Reverend Sun Young Moon <laughs> sent sent young people out to the streets with flowers to sell and raise money for a fortune enough to buy the Washington Times. Um, <laughs> Wells Church was trying to raise money for a building and they sent a young girl out in the streets of Jackson with flowers to sell. That's just one of the stories, the history of Wells Church Luella Ware Moore, who, she was Luella Ware, and her folks' window is right back there. Uh, one of the organizational meetings for this church was held in her aunt and uncle's house. She was living with them, but she sold flowers on the streets of Jackson to raise money for Wells Church. As I mentioned earlier, we have a lot of characters who've come through here, and saintly characters are gonna be mentioned by Betty and Charlie. Uh, we have other characters too, and I'd like to call on a couple of them right now <laughs> to present a history of Wells Church, and Keith Ferguson will present the early history. Yeah, thanks for that setup, Jim. Uh, <clears throat> wow, welcome. It, this is a great day. Uh, 
to be here at Wells Church. This is a, I'm, I'm just like y'all. This church has meant a lot to me in so many ways, and uh, uh, just proud to be a part of it. Uh, it does have a very rich history. My role today is to share a little bit of the early years, and uh, and so uh, it was started in 1926. It was uh, officially organized on November the 21st, 1926, at 3 p.m. And thank you, Anthony. And that was with uh, 76 members. Um, our first services were held at the uh, school across the street, Galloway Elementary. And our our church still has a rich history with that. We were Dr. School uh, partners over there, so we've been a long partnership. This building was built in 1927. Uh, the first service was held here on December the 11th, 1927. This was the, the fourth Methodist church in the city. Uh, of course, Galloway downtown was the first Methodist church. Uh, and this is just kind of a side note I found when I was l looking up that. The, um, uh, it was organized in 1836, uh, and it was the first church in Jackson. Um, is known then as First Methodist Church. The Baptist organized in 1838, the Presbyterians in 1837, the Episcopalians in 1844, and the Catholics in 1846. Uh, the Methodist Church was built in 1839. The Baptist and the Presbyterian churches in 1843. And then St. Andrew's Episcopal Church was built in 1846 with the aid of Methodists. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's from the history of uh, Galloway, if you look on their website. It's kind of neat. Uh, so Galloway was first, and then it was Central AME, which is a historic black church, uh, which was formed a couple years after that. They were the second. Then there was Capitol Street, and so we were the fourth. Uh, we were the first outside the downtown area. Uh, Capitol Street, is, has, they shut down a few years ago, so we're the third church that's still remaining uh, in operation today. Uh, back at that time, uh, the end of the city was right here on Woodrow Wilson. They had a trolley car running back then, and it would come here, and it'd turn around and, and go back. Um, the... Um, this bridge, the Woodrow Wilson Bridge, wasn't built until, uh, I'm not sure when it was built, but it was later and connected State Street and, and Bailey Avenue and here. So uh, the, so in 1926, a small group did meet in the home of the Weirs. Uh, and Mr. Weir, uh, they lived over here on DeWitt Street, and Mr. Weir was Miss Lou uh, as uncle. And this is Miss Lou, and I, I thought it was worthy. Miss Lou served this church for many, many years, and she was quite a lady, um, just quite a lady. And um, so I wanted to, I wanted y'all to see Miss Lou if you haven't uh, seen this before, or didn't know. Let's give Miss Lou a hand. God bless Miss Lou. Her, 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 her favorite thing was, I think, chili cheese dogs from Dairy Queen. You know, thank you, Anthony. Um, so. So uh, they got together. Miss Lordell Ginn, some of you may remember her. She came here. Miss Lordell Ginn, I looked this up, she passed away 12 years ago from tomorrow. And Miss, Miss Lordell, her, they were cousins or something with Miss, um, Miss Lou. And Miss, Miss Ginn's dad was Mr. Martin, and he was a charter member and actually one of the carpenters that uh, built all, did all the woodwork in here. So... But um, so much of our history that we're sharing with you today uh, is, a, is a result of Miss Lou keeping a lot of these things together. Uh, she was a member here for 70, she was a charter member and a member for 70 years until her death. And um, so, uh, so we have her to thank for a lot of this history. And then of course we have Aunt Betty. Aunt Betty um, came here at 10 years old and she's been here for 70 years. And so she's... And, and, and we could do that for about 12, 15 minutes, and it wouldn't be enough, I promise you, because uh, it, without her uh, putting this together, uh, it would be quite different. <laughs> the, um, so 
Thank you, Aunt Betty. And um, so the, the first donation to the church was made by Miss Bertie Wright, and that was $25. Uh, and as Jim alluded to, people would go around into the community asking, you know, we're building a church. Can you help us? And, and one of the things, some of the people were giving money uh, for these stained glass windows. And, um, but uh, one of the kids was asking somebody, and the guy says, I'm Baptist. Why well, I need to give you my money. They said, well, we'll remember you. And, <laughs> and so true to nature. Uh, if you go back in this back, uh, in the Sunday school class back here, there is a uh, window back there that says, to our Baptist friends. And, <laughs> and um, to our knowledge, it's the only, only uh, stained glass window in a, in a Methodist church dedicated to another denomination. So, uh, and again, if you want to know a lot about the windows, Aunt Betty could spend about an hour and a half telling you about that. So um, maybe, maybe we'll get more of that one day. Uh, the church has had really five names. Uh, in 1926, when it was originally, it was named Glendale Methodist Episcopal Church South. And the South referred to the, you know, there was a split in the church. Uh, they had, so they had the North and the South, you know, to the Civil War. Uh, in 1939, we kind of got over to whatever and, and combined, and, and, and we, we, we dropped the south. But if you go out here on the corner of the church, there is a cornerstone, and it has um, Glendale Methodist Episcopal Church South. So, um, so, the, um, so Brother James Wells, he was our third pastor and served for 14 years starting in 1932. Uh, he died in an accident, car accident in 1947, and in 1949, due to their great love for him, they renamed this church uh, Wells Memorial Methodist Church. And uh, then in 1968, the Methodist Church merged with the United Brethren, which is another Wesleyan tradition, and became known as Wells Memorial United Methodist Church. So, and now, of course, unofficially or whatever, most of us just go, Wells Church, you know, or even Wells. It's Wells. Wells has such a reputation. You say Wells, most people go, oh, yeah, I get it. So, Our pastors through the years. In 1926, we had uh, Reverend Charles E. Downer. Uh, in 1930, we had Reverend A.B. Barry, who served, as you under, would know, during the Great Depression. Uh, in 32 is when Reverend James Wells came here. And he was here for 14 years until his death in 1947. Uh, and at that time, he had been the longest-serving Methodist uh, minister of any one charge in Mississippi. Uh, in 1947, Robert Case came, and uh, he presided, or he was here when that great, the Great Revival took place in 1915. We'll talk a little more about that in a minute. In 1955, there was Linus P. Anders. In 1957, there was Reverend H.T. Hot Landrum. <laughs> I just think that's the coolest name, especially for a preacher. Hot Landrum, so. <clears throat> they say he was a really nice guy, too. Uh, 1961, we had Bill Wall. In 1965, we had R.E. Wesson. 1966, Russell Gilbert. And in 1969, we got this young 33-year-old guy uh, and his lovely, beautiful wife, Patsy. Uh, and so we had Keith Tonkel come in 69. So, uh, so <clears throat> you know, so we were organized in 26, built in 27, uh, first services in December of 27. The Depression was in 29. So... All churches were suffering, and this one included, and so they were actually about to close the church, and uh, there was even a contract with a movie theater to come take over this place. It was going to turn it into a movie theater, uh, but Reverend Wells came, and he said, you know, let's work on it. Let's see if we can do it and make it better, and, and they did, and he did, and they did, and God blessed it, so, um, so the... Um, yeah, and a lot of people wondered, you know, Reverend Wells, he died in a, a car accident. He was going to see his son graduate from med school, 
and he died um, on his way. I think it was in Alabama. Uh, I believe it was Reverend Wells. And at the time, he he was a great godly man. and would it was known for his his great prayers. Um, I believe this was one that prayed for all the servicemen. And and I mean, and there's a. Uh, post around here of all the names of all the servicemen who were fighting in World War II. And, and, and correct me, Aunt Betty, all of them came back. Yeah, I'll, so anyway. But um, one of the things that was um, said about Reverend Wells is when he was, when the coroner was preparing him for his burial, he'd never seen a man with calluses on his knees. So it says a lot about him. The um, so in 1949, the church was renamed for his honor. 1950, the church was expanded, and the house uh, behind the uh, church here was, was uh, bought, and that was used for a Sunday school annex. And then in January of 1950, they had the Great Revival. This was uh, known as the, the Spontaneous Revival. It lasted all month. Uh, people would come here. They'd stay the early morning. Lots of people came to know Christ here. Lots of people became pastors here and went on to lead on great, uh, significant, and large congregations. And uh, so Wells has had a great influence uh, there. Uh, a couple of things, you know, you got people together, you're going to have a lot of good things, but, you know, there's always going to be dirt, right? <laughs> so, so, so guess what some of the major controversies were about? One, putting a kitchen in the church. Okay? So... When the, when the annex was done, the, um, not the annex, but the fellowship hall was there, but there was a great debate over the kitchen. And at the time, Central Prez was the only other church that had a kitchen. But we did put the kitchen in. We were the second church in the state to have a kitchen. So, now, the other controversy, air condition. There was great, great controversy over the air condition. It's like, man, I mean, so back then, only the movie houses in the um, places like Woolworths had air condition. So he's like, man, if we get air conditioned, people are just going to come here to get cool. <laughs> so, so anyway, thank the Lord that won out and, and um, we got air condition. Uh, interesting point, our air condition was secondhand. It came from Woolworths. Got it at a bargain. <laughs> got it at a bargain. And I believe that that was the air conditioning system that stayed here until the 80s or something. Is that right? So, so anyway, that was that was kind of thing. Um, and then the other thing is that we've had some. We had a, a great divide over literature and um, the uh, Sunday school class. We were we were doing some Methodist. Uh, focus thing, but they, they wanted to use the official Methodist um, literature, and some people didn't like that. Uh, some thought it may be too liberal or whatever, and I was just thinking, Lord of mercy, if some of those people could hear what we study now, <laughs> some of these books we read. <laughs> anyway, but it's, um, the, uh, and of course, you know, we've had the, the changing neighborhood, the civil rights era. Uh, a lot of that. 1967, we had Operation Shoestring began. This was right before Keith came here, and uh, health clinics and a lot of a lot of good work was being done in the neighborhood. And uh, and then of course in 1969, Keith and Pat came, and and um, I'm not sure if this is exactly when this started, but I, I was looking at some of the early photos. It may be in may be in our history book here, but uh, I, I was seeing on the sign out there it said, "All are welcome." And I think that was one of the significant things that Keith brought to us, in addition to all the others, but everybody being welcome in this, in this um, congregation. And um, that turned into everyone welcome, which, of course, is out on the sign. And as Jim alluded to, it was also known as the Blue Jean Church, you know? So you could kind of come as you are. And so there were hippies and all that kind of stuff back then. And um, uh, I've heard stories, many of you have heard these, but... You know, looking down here at the altar and, and kneeling down, uh, uh, holding hands to a little old lady with the white gloves and, and a hippie right next to her, you know. And so it's a great, great thing there. But uh, So thanks, thanks to Aunt Betty. Thanks to Miss Lou for preserving what she's done. Thanks to David and Jane and 
all the others. You can read more about the history in the church here, and there's just lots of great things here. And so uh, Wells has a rich history. It does have a great future, and we sure hope that you're going to be a part of it. Thank you. Thank you, Keith, for that ancient history. Um, Dr. Jeff Parker is going to bring us up to date. I don't know if I can find Jeff. Jeff? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's what I was told. Okay, well, congratulations. You're going to bring us up to date. <laughs> machine. Um, it's, uh, so, uh, it's quite ironic that me of all people will be asked to speak spontaneously, but, um, so, he, let me show you this. This is a picture of Jim Yon. Okay. Yeah. It's what? It came after Luella. It came after Luella. Yeah. Right, and um, if you pull out your fan, <laughs> and um, look at the right-hand side of your fan, it's a list of um, many of the ministries of this church. And just go through some of them. There are many, many more. There are many ministries that have happened. Um, privately and silently and out of the public light that have affected many people. These are the, some of the more public ones that people who don't necessarily even come to this church would know about. And they're the ones that say, oh yeah, Wells, we know about these things. So, of course, there's Wells Fest, which has been now been going on for decades and um, is not only a, um, a wonderful family-friendly festival, but has raised uh, an enormous amount of money for worthy causes in our local area. The Tuesday morning outreach, Tuesday community outreach, this is ongoing, it has grown, has multiple components, um, food, uh, a food pantry, uh, health clinic. Um, there's very active work in helping people get um, official identification, which then lets them do a lot of other things that require identification. That's a very active ministry. Bailey Avenue Health Education Foundation has worked on some housing issues in this neighborhood. Galloway Adoptive School has been going on for a very long time, and um, we have um, have a book buddy program and have a, an, a recognition program for academic improvement and academic achievement that's uh, one of the highlights in this community each year, that award ceremony. The James Club, which meets now across the street, um, this church um, has been a welcome to all, and there's many different ways, I guess, that, that we divide ourselves in lots of different ways, by culture, by race, um, and so on. Um, but people who have problems with addiction or mental health problems are often excluded um, and not welcome. They make people uncomfortable. People don't want to be around them, but this church has been different. And the, the James Club is one very prominent reflection of that. They have 12-step meetings there, um, Sunday school classes, and it's a, um, a very important point of recovery uh, in our community and for our church. Jesse Gates Edible Forest, which is across the street over here, Jesse Gates, the son of two of our beloved um, members, Bob and Joy Gates, um, 
Loy, Moncrief, and many others from this church have worked to make that a community sanctuary and, um, and a, a place, a garden that keeps giving back to, to the community and to us. We have an ongoing relationship with Aldersgate UMC. We formally meet together twice a year at uh, the day before Thanksgiving and then um, for Ash Wednesday. We alternate back and forth and share food with each other. Um, and we're blessed by that. Ne Georgetown Neighborhood Homes, MLK Parade. Um, I don't know how many years we participated in the MLK Parade, um, but it's been many years and that's probably of, um, when I think back to, to people who've um, made mention to me or highlighted wells, they've said things like, oh yeah, we saw you in that parade. We sort of stand out a little bit in that parade. But, um, Wells House, um, Wells House no longer exists, but um, Wells House was a transition place for people who no longer were able to live independently, but didn't need to go to um, a nursing home or a place like that. Um, I think Jim Young, you were an important part of Wells House, as were many other people. Operation Shoestrings has already been mentioned. St. John's Church, we helped plant that church there. Um, it has since closed. Many of the members have gone on to enrich other churches and, and also come here. Habitat for Humanity. I don't know how many churches on Glendale have. Um, we built in our collaboration with Habitat for Humanity. My guess is it's five or six, seven. Okay, seven churches. Houses. <laughs> Houses, yes. Um, yes. And uh, Habitat was one of the first um, things that I was involved in this church outside of worship services was a way to get to know people and get to know the neighborhood. Hurricane Katrina, um, we had a, a long-standing and uh, active role in helping um, rebuild, handle demolition and then rebuild um, some homes after Hurricane Katrina. Um, we had our own, we got a trailer, we had outfitted with uh, tools and building supplies and um, that went on for a couple of years. I know Bruce Reynolds, Keith May, many other people were, um, Dave Deardorff were very involved in that over a long period of time. We've had mission trips. Um, the most number of mission trips was to Mexico where we not only did missions but were ministered to and developed personal relationships with many people in the little town of Salamic, Mexico, who we continue to stay in touch with. We made uh, a number of trips to Nicaragua and a trip to Haiti as well. Community Nursing Home and VA Worship Service are a couple of the others. As I said, these are the, the prominent ones or formal ones. There are many, many others. So we want to thank all those who, over the years, uh, who participated in them in, in public and private ways, and all of you as well. I know the next part of the program is going to happen as, as planned because they're sitting here on the front pew. So, <laughs> Uncle Betty, uh, Uncle, Uncle, <laughs> Aunt, Aunt Betty and Uncle Charlie are going to come and tell us about some of those saints who've, who've been at Wells over the 90 years. Part of the program is called the Great Cloud of Witnesses. And before we begin that, I just wanted to say that Uncle Charlie needs no introduction. Everybody knows him. But we do want to honor him for being our doorkeeper in the house of the Lord for more than 40 years. I'm sure. In Hebrews 12, in the modern version, it says, you are not alone. The grandstands of heaven, all the way up to the clouds, the high seats, are piled high with people who stood the test of time and eventually saw their faith manifested. 
We are surrounded today by the saints of the past in a very unique way. We are inspired by their godly examples that they set in their lifetime here at Wales. Wales has many over the 90 years who inspired us and who've now gone to heaven. And we can't list all of these, but we wanted to list a representative few and say that we remember these who are our great cloud witnesses. I consider it a rare privilege and a higher honor to be a part of this presentation. I had the privilege of knowing or meeting all of these except Brother Wells. And the first one is Brother Downer. I met him when he was 94 years old. Brother Downer, as you've heard, was our first pastor. And I think some of his family are here today. Are you? Yes. Would y'all stand for us? So we remember his wonderful spirit. Luella Moore, who was the last charter member and was known as Miss Lou. Um, we've already heard about Miss Lou, but we do want to say that she was a member for more than 70 years and was the most cheerful person and did so many things in the church even before she was the secretary. Brother Wells. Everyone who knew Brother Wells uh, would have something wonderful to say about him and how he inspired us to be prayer warriors. And as you've heard, he, he prayed so that there were calluses on his knees. Uh, Mr. S.W. Perdelford. Mr. Perdelford uh, was one of the founding charter members. His name is out on our cornerstone. And then he was our superintendent of Sunday school for more than 20 years. And his family is here. Would y'all stand? His job. The Carl Akers family. Both the father, Carl, and the mother, Emma Lou, and Doris Lee, who became a missionary to Panama, and Marilyn and Malcolm, who were faithful members here, and who, whenever you ask uh, Mr. Akers anything, never had a word of criticism, but always said things were getting better and better. Matt Dukes. Uh, Mr. Dukes was our custodian. He helped us get our air conditioner and kept it running for many years. He was, I thought a Coca-Cola could solve any problem. <laughs> and I do too. <laughs> and when asked what we should, what one name our church should have, he said Emmanuel, because that means God with us. Brother Bob Case. Brother Case was very special to me as he was the preacher preaching when I became a Christian. And he led us here uh, in the 50s in our greatest growth. Uh, Jimmy Cron. Jimmy Cron was a printer and worked at the Claren Ledger, but he was a Sunday school teacher here of the young people. And you know it takes a special person to work with the young people. But whenever Jimmy started any sentence, it would be, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. James Beasley. James Beasley was our choir director for many, many years, and he and his family contributed a great deal to our church. The J.W. Bryant family. Uh, there were uh, many in this family, and they were the ones to give us our first instruments, the piano and organ and the chimes. We only have one of the chimes left over here, but we remember them each time we use it. Uh, Ms. Lenny Bell and Annis Laird. Uh, Ms. Bell and Ms. Laird lived next door in the great white house there and were very faithful to always be here. And Ms. Laird was also a wonderful worker with the youth. Brother Wall. Brother Wall was uh, one of our pastors for four years, and he wrote a book on baptism and made us proud to be sprinkled. <laughs> it's neither it. Miss Nader and Miss Mamie White. Uh, Miss Mamie was uh, an, a bedridden for more than 40 something years, and she was really an example of personification of patience and suffering. And Miss Nedia, her mother, took care of her till she died and continued to come to our church till she was in her late 90s. Miss Cooksey. 
Miss Cooksey was a great Bible teacher and was especially known for teaching revelations many times, although we never understood it. <laughs> Charles Gunn. We want to remember uh, Charles and his work here and uh, his wife and three girls are, that were here. And we received a, a letter from Ruth giving her testimony, and we're going to print it in a little book for you to see. Hemp Wallace. Hemp Wallace was our head usher for a long time, and we hope some of his folks are here too. Um, Hemp just butchered the King's English, but he did it <laughs> in, in the greatest spirit, and nobody could ever correct him. <laughs> hey, and Charles Beecham. Uh, those are the parents of Charles, and they were very faithful here. And uh, Miss Faye was one of the members in our Wells house. Jerry Allen. Jerry Allen was a nurse and a missionary to Africa, one of our first missionaries we sent out. And Geraldine uh, died showing us how a Christian dies. Earl Hill. Earl Hill loved God's earth and wanted us to take care of every blade of grass and trees that were here. <laughs> And he was a great teacher to us about that. But where, whenever you ask Errol how he was, he was on top of the world. Pat, Pat Tonkel. Pat Tonkel was our first lady here at Wales uh, for more than 40 years. She was active in every part of the church. She not only was one of our musicians, but she went back to school so she could be that musician for us. In her first year here, she fed everybody in the church at a sit-down dinner with six at a time. Just think about that. And so we honor uh, Pat. And we honor many, many others who've been members here. But, and we, we are all better because we knew these folks. Thank you. Thank you, Betty and Charlie. In your bulletin is a sheet that uh, we'd like for you to fill out, if you will. Uh, we want to know when you came to Wells and anything you'd like to write about your, your Wells experience. And uh, we're going to compile these later. If you'll just take a few minutes and, and fill it out and... When, uh, as we leave this, this gathering, if you'll just leave them on the entrance table back there, then we'll, we'll compile them and, and have them. Uh, while we're doing that, I've, I've double-checked, and we do have music. Uh, Margaret is going to be playing uh, cello for about five minutes while we fill out these forms. <laughs>
Thank you, thank you. If you, if you look at the program uh, and you turn to hymnal page 57, we're going to sing, oh, 4,000 tongues to sing. Uh, I'm going to take a liberty and say that we're not going to sing all verses because uh, we don't want to be sitting here until the centennial. Um, and oh, 4,000 tongues to sing has seven verses on page 57. And then if you flip the page, there's another 14, 17 more. So we'll sing, let's sing the first verse and the second verse. First and second verses of hymn 57. And let's stand. standing, John Brazier is going to close us with a word of prayer. Following the, uh, the prayer here in just a moment, I'm going to ask you, we're going to take about five minutes, about five minutes if you need to go to the restroom, get some water, whatever you need to do, and we'll come back and we'll start the service approximately at 11.05, all right? Let's pray. God, we thank you for what we have been a part of this morning, for the legacy that this church is and continues to be. And just the mention of Wells Church, people cock their head and they have a glimmer in their eye. And we thank you for that. We thank you for a pastor who teaches it, who breathes it, who lives it, and who loves it. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Amen.